What is going on ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're having a good day because I'm having a great one. So we have Doomfist who is literally releasing tomorrow as of when this is up. This is the hero we've all wanted and obviously he's pretty damn cool. Yeah, I expect a ton of people playing him wrong and competitive pretty soon, but let's not get off track here. Everyone is excited for the Doomfist release, especially because of my friend who totally said that Doomfist would never exist, but now look where we are. People are already looking down the horizon to the next hero releasing probably in December, myself included. Of course, we're excited to see Doomfist, but it's an entirely different kind of fun when we just get to speculate. If we remember, Blizzard said that they work on two or three heroes at a time, so they likely have the concept down for the next hero. If we look at the way they're releasing heroes, we have a support, then DPS, then tank, then another DPS. So throughout the video, I'm just going to assume that we're getting another support. I know some are technically support hero, but I'm just referring to the categories they're in. So let's think about who the next hero will be, at least as a character first. Well, to start off, we still have a bunch of loose ends with characters like Athena, Hammond, and most recently, we can speculate Maximilian. Now, if you haven't read the Masquerade comic, I'll put it in the description, so be sure to check that out first. If you can't be bothered to read the comic, that's totally cool, I'll explain it. So, in this little story, Doomfist is coming back from prison, and he just checks up on his organization to make sure everything is still running smoothly. He gets information from an Omnic named Maximilian. Akande beats up some people and takes Talon back. So, this character Maximilian is a Talon agent who deals with information much like Sombra does, but with word of mouth instead of hacking. He also gets a seat at Talon's roundtable, which means he's a pretty important person. Now, the reason I talked for so long about Maximilian is because he's already a prevalent character in the lore. As opposed to Athena who existed in an animated short a long time ago, Maximilian is brand new to the story and hasn't gone past the put this hero in the game or not stage. I think by now Athena isn't really relevant, also Hammond is a newer character but honestly there's no reason for him to be a support, he kind of led an uprising on the moon colony. This leaves us with only our good buddy Max. Now that we have the character established, what kind of support will he be? Well obviously he has to be a healer. The biggest problem with the Talon team is that there are no healers. There are only actually 4 healers in the game right now, so that's also a problem. Yes, yeah, Sombra is also technically a healer, but Hanzo technically shouldn't be able to stand with those ankles. Like, how do you even walk? Anyways, I like having new support heroes because the healing dynamics in Overwatch are incredibly flexible and versatile. Before I jump into the abilities, we need to talk about his health pool. Of course it would be 200 because nobody feels comfortable with anything lower. Except Tracer. Tracer's weird. You could just say give him health like Zenyatta, but there's one thing wrong with that. You see, Zenyatta uses his willpower to gain his shielding. He's a monk, so he has weird powers or something. Maximilian would have to have 100 health, 25 armoring, and maybe 75 shielding for reasons I'll get into later. So let's get into the basis of his abilities. One of the things he could do is use health packs in a new way. Imagine that Maximilian has 5 drones three of which that he sends out to grab health packs from obscure areas around the map. Areas that are preferably on the enemy team's side. That way it doesn't take health packs away from your team, and also denies the enemy team health packs. I imagine this is most useful on payload maps. Of course, it wouldn't work on hacked health packs, that's way too OP. His drones would automatically distribute healing to allies around him, so it's basically his passive. I think I would call this passive first aid because it brings healing to people. Now, I'm no good with numbers at all, so I don't know how to balance this even slightly. It might seem too underpowered if it takes the drones too long to bring a health pack, or too overpowered if they just teleport them. Also, the drones can be killed, but he takes 15 seconds to produce another drone. Now, remember how I said he has 5 drones? Well, the other two are used for attacking and defending. These ones are invulnerable, by the way. Imagine you can configure his drones to both attack, both defend, or one of each. It could cycle just like weapons do. Each attacking drone could damage boost him by 15% to make him more lethal, and each defending drone could add 30 shielding to himself. I imagine that as a support hero he could move a drone or two to other people. Just to reward people to play more defensively, stacking two offensive drones only gives plus 25% attack bonus, and stacking defensive drones gives plus 75 shielding. Going back to what I said about his health pool, I imagine he would augment himself to have 75 shielding. So his character is going to be a little bit complicated, but here's how it would work. His primary fire is an AoE explosion ball that deals a small amount of burst damage to people caught in it. The weapon swapping is between each personal drone, much like swapping between blaster and staff with mercy, except his primary fire is always available. 
With the selected drone, his shift ability makes him switch between offense and defense. His secondary fire will send the drone out to auto-target a teammate, and his E ability is to recall his personal drones back to him. Of course, with the selected drone, he can just swap targets like Zenyatta's Orbs of Discord and Harmony without them coming back first. Finally, we have his ultimate. Support ultimates are by far my favorite to create because they can be super simple yet super powerful. His ultimate would be called 3 for all. Originally, I would call it 1 for all, but that doesn't make sense for what it is, just whatever. 3 for all would be a super cool ultimate. He would mass produce drones to create enough for everyone in his line of sight to get 3 each. They would get 2 defensive drones and 1 offensive drone no matter what. He also can't use his personal drones during this time. This gives every person on his team plus 75 shielding, plus 15% attack damage, and would last for about 10 seconds. I don't think I mentioned this, but it would also give him 200 shielding for the duration just to make sure he doesn't die during it, because that would cancel it. This would make 3 for all one of the best initiation ultimates in the game. I also think it would charge super quick like Mercy's ult because it doesn't have the biggest impact much like Rez. Oh wait, Rez has a massive impact, and it charges super fast. Huh. The speed at which Mercy charges Rez is for a different video, but we'll be using it to compare charge rates. Mercy gets Resurrect with 1,625 points, which is incredibly fast. Zenyatta gets Transcendence with 2875 points, so for this medium impact ult, I think it would charge to be ready at 1,890 points, which I did just make up with nothing to back it up. This character is by far one of the most complicated heroes ever conceived, I think. Out of the 3-star system, I would give him 5, because he obviously would be one of the hardest to manage heroes out there, but if used correctly, he could be insanely good with giving out shielding, damage boost, and passive healing. Now, his DPS isn't something to write home about, but I really want another hero similar to Mercy who can deal damage, but that isn't their main focus. Of course, this entire video is speculation, and we have no idea what the dev team is up to. This is one of the most obscure healers ever created, and honestly, I would love to see a hero like this in the game. If you want to see this hero in the game really badly, just like me, send this video to Blizzard and give them ideas for their next healer. I would be really honored if Blizzard even decided to take a look at what I have in mind. Of course, that probably won't happen, but we can dream, right? After all that, I want you guys to tell me your thoughts about the hero down below, and if you liked the video, show me by hitting the like button. If you absolutely loved this video and you just can't get enough, don't forget to subscribe for more in the future, and hit the bell icon to never miss another upload. Have fun playing Doomfist tomorrow, and as always, have a fantastic day.